Just hours ago, Monika Gohl's mother died of COVID-19. Now she is sat by her husband's side in a New Delhi hospital, where he is in a critical condition with the virus. 39-year-old Amit is wedged between three other patients in a hospital casualty ward, one of many in India, the world's second most populous nation, that is totally overwhelmed with patients. Goal, a software engineer, says she managed to find an oxygen cylinder for her husband. But doctors say he needs a ventilator, and none can be found. He was admitted uh, last night. Uh, we, we got him at uh, 9 o'clock. Um, my mom is fine here in the morning today uh, because of lack of ventilator. There was no ventilator, otherwise she couldn't survive. Now, again, he is he needs ventilator support. Doctor says we have two days. I have tried, I don't know, thousands of numbers across India. No, nobody is helping. Thousands of Indians have been frantically searching for beds and life-saving oxygen for their sick relatives, even seeking help from social media apps and personal contacts. Hospital beds that do become available, especially in intensive care units, are snapped up in minutes. The situation is dire. The head of ICU at Holy Family Hospital, Dr Sumit Ray, told Reuters some patients are dying on their way to hospital because they're going from hospital to hospital trying to find a bed. It is very bad. It's beyond bad, actually. It's not a crisis, it's a devastatingly bad situation. That's how I can describe it. It's reached a point uh, where uh, crisis is a very mild word for it. At this point of time, we have patients, we have, we are beyond our capacity in the ICU, as you can see. We have put in beds and stretchers between beds. We have run out of ventilators. We are using anesthesia machines to ventilate patients. We have patients on the, on the wards who are very sick, who ideally should be in an ICU, but we have no space for them. India's total COVID-19 cases surpassed 18 million on Thursday, and the country has repeatedly broken records recently for the number of fatalities in a single day there. Gravediggers are working around the clock to bury victims. Hundreds have been cremated in makeshift pyres in parks and parking lots. Meanwhile, Gold continues to feel helpless and is worried about what she will tell her eight-year-old son if she has to return home without his father.